was never the kid that started off painting or drawing. I was never that kid. I actually fell into art a little bit later. It was in middle school that my friends had been taking art and I was interested in music. And I think I wanted to kind of fit in. I learned to love art because it was so different from music. Music is so, um, I'm sorry, I fucked up. Um, music is so, um, it's so predictable it seems. With art, you know, I think there's endless options. Even though music can have that effect as well, I just found art to be really beautiful and really different. and. Um, having the opportunity to project all different kinds of languages and voices, and I found that really appealing. So I took my first art class, my first real art class, when I came into high school, and I started off at the center. My work is always intuitive and it's always fast. I feel like if I don't, um, if the piece doesn't speak to me fast enough, it just won't happen. And that's, it goes along with music too. I feel like my best work is always very rapid and it's the kind of work that if I, if I'm not focused enough or if I'm not kind of with it, then it just won't happen. And that's why I think that I make so much work. A lot of it's trash, but a lot of it um, is a lot of screw-ups, and then I just kind of go back through the screw-ups and, you know, see what's left over and work with that, but, and then there's a very, very few gems that come out of it, but I think that's kind of my art making, is that I make so much work, but there's only a few things that actually escape my studio. So my work is intuitive and what happens is I kind of sketch this, this almost, I wouldn't even say it's a composition because it changes so rapidly, but it's just like these beginning marks. I think that a lot of artists have this fear that they're just so afraid to start on a piece when it's like a pristine white. So that's why I just kind of screw up the whiteness and then make something over top of it. After that, I um, layer paint colors, and I always work with complements, and I and that's I guess my layering process that I start off with, you know, for example, a yellow, and then I'll make it into an, an orange, and then like a blue on top of it, so you can see the complement of the or or the blue. Um, so there's kind of that um, that tension. So I work on this format called Scrolls that I kind of made up, and what happened was I was working, I got a present from a friend, well it wasn't really a present, but um, I had an art friend who had a giant piece of rag paper, and was talking about how he was going to start working on canvas, and that he didn't really need this rag paper. So he asked me to make him something on the rag paper, and I said, yeah, for sure, because I, you know, love rag paper. I've always loved the feeling of rag paper, I love how heavy it is. And um, I got home and completely screwed up the rag paper because I just made this horrible, horrible, horrible drawing on this giant piece of rag paper, and I felt really ashamed. 
So I ripped the piece of rag paper up and um, it was around like a 14 inch cut from the bottom. And I guess from then that started the whole scroll thing. Um, I started with using that format to um, compose this entire series. I work with drips sometimes. Um, it's not really in my nature to do drips. I've always kind of thought those were really cliche, but um, until I actually started doing them, I thought they were really beautiful. Um, but this piece is called Rosa, and I made this piece after the initial like eight scrolls that I worked on the original. And now I'm working on kind of the, um, the kind of, I would not say, the, the next generation of them, I guess. And uh, I'm experimenting a lot with color instead of the, the tension of black and white. And, um, but yeah, I'm really excited about it. And, you know, but this piece came together when I was in New York, which is a huge, it's a, just a place of inspiration for me. Um, you know, and from then, I think I bring back the work and, you know, here from New York and it turns into something really different. Like this piece was not anything like this in New York. It was completely different. And when I came back, I actually like redid it, it seemed. But you know, there's still reminiscences. Like there was this, there was the two um, pieces of paper I laid out and, and cut and um, pasted onto the top of, onto the top piece of the scroll. But, um, but yeah, for the most part, it's pretty different. You always write music or to paint about death, which is really weird and kind of morbid, but um, I think why I'm so interested in art and why I have to be doing art is because I feel like I have to justify my existence some way. Like I have to archive myself and if I don't do it, nobody will do it or they won't do it the right way that I want them to. So that's why I just do it myself. But um, I think, I don't know, just death has always been a part of my life. I've always, I've always been going through death, you know, um, whether that be a family mem member or just people that I know, just people in my life that have kind of deceased, which has happened, you know, quite a bit. And, um, but recently my, both of my grandparents have passed away from my dad's side and, um, well, not my grandmother, but my dad's father and his wife. And, he had lung cancer, and he had a really bad form of lung cancer, and he kind of went in a way that he was really upset about the world and kind of angry with it. And I think I, you know, from then I started working on this body of work with these body parts and this, these these you know these um, organs and these bones, and just to kind of showcase how fragile the body is and how beautiful. It is, and how we are so, we are, there's a limit, there's an ex expiration date for us, and that we only make a certain amount of things in our life, and we only do a certain amount of things, and we only breathe a certain amount of times until we go, but I think it's also a celebration, and, um, you know, just of life and the cycles of life, and that's why I, I choose mine to do my cycles of life showcasing art and working and I love the work part so I think what made me really happy though was um, my sister who just was born in June and um, my sister Naomi and she has been such an uplifting thing for me I think I think I was going through this kind of this wave of I wouldn't say I was depressed but just kind of I was you know down for a while just because I had had gotten rejected from a couple labels and and I was working on my music and nothing seemed to be coming from that um, and you know I had gone through a couple two deaths of friends of, you know friends that I, people I had known and um, but it was until I think um, the beginning of the summer that I really was happy again and was really inspired to make work that was a little bit more um, happy and uplifting and that was because of my sister.
<laughs> Yay! Okay. That's nice. I like that a lot. 